you are an artist who wants to make comics and does not have a writer and has never written anything before, you are going to have to dip your toes into writing for the first time if you want to make this comic thing happen. Even comics that don't have any dialogue have writing to them, for the most part. And if this is your first attempt writing a comic, you will quickly learn that writing is really hard. At least good writing is really hard. As I learned as a teen, I wrote a lot, and it was all very bad, and it was all written very quickly, and now that I kind of know a little bit about the basics of writing, it's really hard to write, because, whew, what if it's bad? Um, but yeah, so I personally have tried writing in the past, like I said, and I do a little writing here and there now, but it's not my main gig. <laughs> I I work as an artist. As you probably know if you watch this channel, I do comic art and I work with Bones, who is my writer, and he does all the hard stuff. Except, JK, all of comics is hard and you should run. Get out now while you still can. <laughs> but yeah, but I've, I've written some short comics. I've personally have never written a long form comic. I've only written little one shots that are maybe like 10 pages at the most which are fun. I like making them. Um, they're a good outlet between my larger projects that I work on with Bones, and I like writing, and I like making comics, so it works out. <laughs> um, I've also written some novels that have never seen the light of day <laughs> or had anyone read them, which is also fun. I usually participate in NaNoWriMo. I rarely win in recent years, but it's fun. It's still a good creative outlet. If you are an artist or a comicer, it is totally okay to write for fun. You don't have to turn it into a thing. You can be an artist and enjoy writing and work with other writers. Don't feel obligated to write something yourself. Honestly, it is just as valid to go have someone else write a collaborative story with you. Say, like, doing an RP together and then having your friend write up the script. That's totally legit, and it's still your story. Writing is hard, <laughs> and I can I can tell you that. Um, so if you're struggling with it, I feel your pain. It, it's it's tough. And Bones, who is a professional writer, who has published novels and comics, he struggles with it often as well. So whether you're a beginner or a pro, it is tough. <laughs> Just like art is tough, you know. They're they're different skills. I also find. If you are a comic artist, whether you're writing your own script or working with a partner, it is definitely very helpful to understand the basics of writing because I think it can inform your artwork and the presentation of your comic quite a bit, even if you're just following a script someone else has written, which will have lots of art direction in it if you have a very good writer. I, well, maybe not. You know, some writers write very sparsely and kind of leave it up to artist interpretation, but basically there will probably be some kind of art direction in it. Um, but kind of understanding visual storytelling, I guess, and understanding like the beats of a story and interpreting character expression. I don't know. Ooh. But basically it's helpful. It can be helpful in creating the artwork and drawing out the ideas, but I think it also helps if you are working with a writer. Um, the way Bones and I work together is I will try to give him lots of feedback on his writing. Like sometimes he will show me the script and ask for my feedback before it's ready to go to the drawing table. Um, just because he needs eyes on it and he needs feedback. And honestly, a feedback partner doesn't have to know a lot about writing to give helpful advice. I don't have to be a great writer to read a book and know that it's boring. <laughs> um, but it definitely does help to have the language around writing, like understanding what different things mean so I can give him more clarity of feedback. Like I can say like, oh, the scene was really fast, the pacing was fast, or um, uh, the exposition is a little heavy-handed here, and I think you need to, I don't know, make it more integrated with character motivation. I don't know. So it's good to have a basic understanding. Honestly, if you would like to expand your knowledge of writing uh, and comics, I would watch the rest of Bones' videos on this channel just because he knows way more about it and knows how to articulate it a lot better than me. And his videos are awesome and helpful and I often will watch them and learn things. Um, so go check those out if you want to write the good things. Um, but I can kind of give you an overview of of my experience with writing comics as someone who does not do writing as a big 
professional thing um, and you can get some decent results. So I would say for your first project, <laughs> I would definitely go small, um, small in scope. So don't start your first comic as this big epic thing. Now there is lots of talk among comic creators saying whether it is a good idea to have your first comic be this big long thing or if it should be short. Basically the argument for doing a long form is you honestly don't really have much to lose if you do a long form comic and lots of people have done it that way and have gotten large followings on their comics and sometimes if you want to learn how to create long form stories, you have to create long form stories and practice at them because they do have different elements than say short fiction or short comics. So it's a good learning tool and if you like it, do it. However, if you're nervous and you just kind of want to dip your toes in, I would recommend doing a shorter comic. The benefits of it are that you can create a really crappy little 10 page comic and then you can finish it with within a couple weeks instead of having it to take years and writing yourself into a hole. But like I said, you know, if your dream is to do long form comics, it's also okay to jump into that as well. Um, personally, the only writing I've done for comics is short little things, maybe like 10 pages at the most, where I can focus on you know, making my dialogue nice or like personally I know that the design process around comics and drawing comics takes a long time to do. Um, so if I'm ever creating a short comic it's usually because like I have an idea for something and I want to get it out and I don't have five years to work on it because I already have long form projects going. So I like to do like a little 10 pager to just kind of get an idea out. Um, it's usually just like a one scene type thing because the more scenes you add to a comic the longer it will get. Similar to if you add lots of characters to your comic the longer it will get. I would say make it like one scene, two, I don't know, one to two scenes and stick to one character for this short little comic. Don't try to fit in 50 characters because it's not gonna, it's not gonna work. It's gonna get really long. But yeah, starting small lets me get out an idea really quick. I can go through a few terrible drafts and have people read it really quickly and give me feedback really quickly instead of having to ask them to sit down and read this like 200 page comic. And admittedly reading comics is shorter than reading a novel, but you know, you know. <laughs> Ooh, ooh. Keep it short, get all your nerves out, and also get lots of little bad comics out, and then they'll get better as you go. It also helps raise your morale if you can finish things <laughs> instead of having to sit and look at an unfinished project forever and ever. Some other little tips for if you are writing your own comic, um, especially if you haven't worked on comics before. One thing I see a lot with new comic creators is it's common to write lots of little panels into your work. So for example, you'll have a scene of like, say you're drawing like a sword fight or something, and you'll have a panel of a close-up on someone's face as they're like striking with their sword, and then you'll show like them jumping towards their opponent with their sword and then you show a panel of the swords clashing and then a panel of one of the swords being knocked away and then a panel of the opponent's face being shocked and then a panel of the triumphant winner's happy face <laughs> like and it's just like a million tiny little panels um for this one thing when honestly you could condense all of that into maybe one panel of the characters just clashing their swords together and showing their expressions in the moment. Um, or two panels if you want to show the swords hitting and then one being knocked away. Condense your panels where you can. Sometimes it's it's not possible. Sometimes you do need multiple panels to express an idea and to show it clearly to your audience. And sometimes you might want to do lots of little panels for effect. For example, um, having lots of little panels can kind of show the feeling of like time going slowly, say someone's sitting at a desk and like it's just them doing other little things like they're typing on their computer and then they're doodling in their notebook and then they're making paper airplanes and then they've got their face on the desk because they're just sitting there waiting forever. So yeah, so you can show like a slow passage of time or you can also do use lots of little panels to show a quick passage of time if you have like a giant jump between events. 
like a montage type thing. But basically, where you can, condense panels. One, it'll save you time when you are drawing this little comic that you're writing. Um, or your artist, if say you're writing it for someone else. It'll just save you time so you don't have to draw out a million little panels of redundant information for your audience to read. And yeah, time saving is always great in comics because it takes forever. So yeah, condense your panels. Start small with a small story. Like I said, work within one scene and kind of learn. It's totally okay to like learn one thing at a time. Like maybe you need to write a short comic to kind of figure out how dialogue works and definitely get lots of feedback on it when you're still in the scripting stage so that you're not committing to long hours of drawing out a comic and then you get feedback that the, the, there's a problem with the dialogue. Get your friends to read it and look at it. Um, Bones and I offer a critique stream for me and Bones if you're interested. So you can sign up for our Patreon. There should be a link down below. Um, but yeah, get eyes on it as you're writing it before you start on the drawing part. It also sometimes helps, I find, when I am writing out a comic to figure out the thumbnail sketch, which is like a quick little two-minute doodle. It's usually like stick figures <laughs> and boxes and squares and circles and stuff. And it's really quick and it's just to kind of figure out the layout of the page. Sometimes I find that helps and then um, I will write around it or maybe I'm trying to figure out an idea for a page and it helps to kind of script and thumbnail at the same time. Especially when you have, say, like a page limit, like say you're doing a submission for a a zine or an anthology or something and there's like a an eight page limit for example you might want to see how much you can condense into a single page by drawing out a little sketch i would recommend that and for the most part have fun don't worry too much about it being amazing especially the first few times you try to write something um it's gonna have problems trust me <laughs> yeah your first few attempts will have troubles um, and you don't have to show them to anyone if you don't want to early on. You can just make comics for yourself until you feel confident enough in an idea. And on the flip side, it's also totally okay to just post your crappy comics <laughs> and have people look at them. Because who knows? Maybe they will inspire someone because maybe they're actually not that bad. And also, as you do more and get better, it'll show a neat little time capsule of, like, where you started and then where you end up. Yeah, and honestly, if you are looking at your comic and your idea and it all just seems like way out of your wheelhouse and just too hard, it is totally okay to go find a writer and work with them. I am fortunate enough to have Bones in my life who will write out lovely stories for us that I get to draw and I don't have to deal with my own self-doubt over my writing capabilities. So yeah, I would recommend working with a writer if you want one. There's no shame in working with a writer. I know some people feel like they want a lot of control over their comic or their idea and they're afraid of other people touching it. But honestly, having someone else look at your ideas and write them can be really freeing. And you gotta share your ideas with people. For one, it'll get them created faster and maybe you don't like writing. So you gotta just give up on being controlling. <laughs> you can't have your fingers in all the pies. You gotta let someone else do it so you can do the fun, cool part of doing the art. Because um, just because someone else is writing it doesn't mean you can't have any input on the ideas. Um, so yeah, get a writer. They're cool. There's lots of them out there who really want to work with artists. Um, if you are looking for someone, we on our Discord server have a like call for creative partners channel. So check it out there. There should be a link down below. And maybe you can find a writer or an artist if that is someone you were looking for. Um, yeah, I hope this was fun and <laughs> not useless. <laughs> Bones is like, do a video about writing advice as like a non-writer and I was like, I don't know, I just follow your advice. <laughs> I think one of the big things that gets in your way as someone who's like, where you don't like feel like a writer, like for me that was something that was in my way for a long time where I was like, I'm an artist, I'm not a writer, I can't do writing stuff, I need to put all my skill points in art. And then I realized like, oh, I kind of like writing, like it's fun. But I think the thing that got in my way was like self-doubt for the most part. Like, I kept thinking, like, oh, I don't want to write something and it's bad, and then it has my name on it, and then, oh my god. <laughs> or, like, I don't know, sometimes I'll be writing something and just partway through I'll be like, it's garbage, and then I'll never touch it again. 
Um, and that really gets in my own way. Whereas I find working with a writer, it's like I can tell cool stories through my art, which I'm a lot more confident with, and someone else can handle the scary writing part. <laughs> um, so if you really want to write things and draw them, I would, you know, get out of your own way. Don't do any of that self-doubt crap. You are a lovely storyteller. Tell the story that you need in your heart. Because if you want to make this story a reality, there's probably someone out there who wants to read it and really wishes there was a story like that out there. So go do it. Write the thing you think you. Good. Proud of you. Okay, I'm gonna go. Goodbye!